convey water, the lifeblood for plants and animals, for humans. We are blessed with water in abundance and streams of great diversity. No stream reflects our heritage as does a warm water stream. Virtually all southern streams except the coldest mountain creek flows run warm. They run from seepage springs through Piedmont pastures, from mountain bogs through foothill forests, from coastal plain wetlands through wooded floodplains, from canebrake thickets through the Mobile Delta. Our streams are as much a part of us as the land itself, inseparable from the heritage we so value. Do you know the values of your warm water streams? Do you know their meaning to society, their ecology, their threats, and their future? Human use of streams goes back many centuries. Archaeologists have shown use evidence that early natives began to live along streams in the south over 10,000 years ago. Many of our streams are named after Indian tribes and their leaders, Catawba, Tallapoosa, Kanawa, and Hiawassee. Well, Native Americans living in the, in the south uh, were tethered to rivers and streams, and you have to think of the rivers and streams in prehistoric times, much like the interstate highways and the secondary roads of today. They're the conduits by which goods, people, and information would have moved. Uh, but the, the streams would have provided food, water, and transportation. Horseshoe Bend Park, located on the Tallapoosa River, is the site of a historical battle. This and other parks, wildlife refuge sanctuaries, recreational sites, and historic monuments located on the shores of our streams attract millions of visitors. These tourists contribute millions of dollars each year to our economy. Stream values are difficult to measure. How can we place a value on their beauty or on the fun of being with family and friends on an outdoor adventure? We can place dollar value on some stream uses. Studies show that stream sport fish anglers from a 15 state area of the south spend more than one billion dollars annually for fishing and fishing related costs. What are we willing to pay to keep our streams free flowing and healthy? A study conducted in Alabama showed that citizens were willing to pay 76 million dollars a year to maintain the state's remaining free flowing rivers in their natural state. Recreation and beauty are only two valuable uses of streams. Many families along the Mississippi, Ohio, Tennessee, Alabama, and Mobile rivers, and numerous Atlantic coast streams fish commercially to supplement their income and diet. For some, commercial fishing is a family tradition, a way of life, part of their heritage. Freshwater mussels are another valuable stream resource, both in terms of dollars and stream ecology. This unique commercial fishery produces shells used in the culture of artificial pearls. However, all is not good for freshwater mussels. Mussel populations are declining in many streams, reducing ecological and economic benefits of our stream resources. Of course, streams have other economic values worth billions of dollars. Streams are sources of water for many municipal water supplies. Huge amounts of water from streams are used to produce items we use daily. For example, it requires millions of gallons of water to produce our daily newspapers. In some instances, water used by an industry is returned to its stream of origin in poor quality, requiring costly treatment by downstream users. Many farmers rely on stream water to irrigate their crops. Crop irrigation is growing at a rapid pace following recent droughts and new irrigation technology. Larger streams provide avenues for barges to transport cargo between such cities as New Orleans and Cairo, Mobile and Tuscaloosa, Louisville, Kentucky, and Charleston, West Virginia. 
The South has more miles of navigable streams than any other region of the United States. Stream waters provide the power to turn turbines and to cool steam electric plants that provide the electricity used in our homes, farms, and factories. An important function of streams, a value often overlooked and difficult to measure in dollars, is the habitat they provide for aquatic organisms. Good habitat is essential for the fish we harvest and for other aquatic organisms that enhance the beauty, wonder, and interest we so enjoy in riverine settings. Several rivers have been designated as scenic rivers. This designation provides special protection to the river, its use, and beauty. Rivers form a continuum of shapes and sizes as they move from the headwaters to their mouths. And wherever you are, you are in a watershed, the area of land that drains water to a common outlet at some point along a stream channel. Healthy life in streams depends on healthy connections between plants and animals in the river and the plants and animals that live on the surrounding lands through which they flow. These healthy connections can be described in terms of their food webs that are in turn related to the physical and chemical relationships of the stream and its watershed. The primary source of energy in small headwater streams is organic material, mostly leaves and wood that originates in the surrounding watershed or streamside area. Bacteria and fungi attack the leaves and tree limbs to begin the decaying process. The matrix of fungi, bacteria, and plant material becomes a nutritious food resource for stream-dwelling invertebrates. Most of these invertebrates are the larvae of aquatic insects that serve as a major food resource for stream fishes. Small headwater streams that flow through heavily forested areas tend to have aquatic invertebrates that best utilize the abundant leaf material entering these streams. The type of pollution that they control is called organic. They eat organic food items. Their job is very similar to that of earthworms in your compost pile. These aquatic animals break down leaf material and other types of organic inputs and incorporate it into their body. Then the fish eat the insects, and then we eat the fish. Uneaten smaller particles of leaves and wood drift downstream where they are used by other invertebrates that have different adaptations for using this detritus-based food. Often these downstream areas are dominated by animals that are called collectors. They have adaptations like filtering fans on black flies or spin nets like caddis flies to filter small detritus particles drifting in the water column. As rivers become larger, their channels are less shaded and microscopic plants called diatoms will grow on the bottoms of the stream. This is a food resource for a group of invertebrates that scrape the surfaces of rocks. Farther downstream, the river becomes deeper and more lake-like. Much of the food resources for aquatic invertebrates living in this section of a stream are produced in the water column. The material that has been transported downstream is very small in size and completely different from the leaf it started as in the headwaters. The fish that live in rivers and feed on these aquatic invertebrates change in shape and type as we move from headwaters to the river mouth. 